Police in cities like Baltimore are looking for answers to the broken relationship between them and the communities of color they serve. A new documentary titled Walking While Black was screened before a recent panel discussion about what especially black officers can do to address this. Several panelists argued we need a new approach, community control of police, while the film posits love is the answer. I see kids when they see me in uniform go out of their way just to say to the top of their lungs, I hate the police, can't stand the police. They used to love us. What happened? Law enforcement officers have been the face of oppression to far too many of our fellow citizens. This dark side of our shared history has created a generational, almost inherited mistrust. The uprising should have never happened. It had gone into Baltimore City and there were these blue flashing lights sending a message to me that I was about to enter a war zone. Baltimore is a trauma-filled city. The problem is most of its inhabitants have learned to coexist with that trauma. The discussion took place outside of Baltimore at the 2017 National Organization of Retired Straight Troopers. The recording was not permitted, but afterwards we caught up with Baltimore Police Chief Melvin Russell, who is a panelist and is featured in the film. So some of the panelists said the first step to really healing the, the rift between community and police is to have some type of community control over, over the police. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, let's, let, let's call it community accountability, them having account, keeping us accountable. I have no mm -hmm. problems with that. Um, at the end of the day, we're still public servants. So my thoughts is, yes, I agree with it. And so the issue of hiring and firing police officers, having a say in who the police chief is, are some of the things that were mentioned today. Absolutely. I, agree. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, there, you know, there are townships, there are cities where, actually, like, let's talk about sheriffs, where they're elected. Even in our own city of Baltimore, the sheriff's elected. Um, I think that's something we do need to look at, you know, because we're not giving the community enough buy-in or say-in and input. Um, and I've seen, this, I'm on my 13th commissioner, and I've seen many times where the community has shouted and jumped up and down, this is who we want for our commissioner, and almost never has it happened. Other panelists had a different message. We came here to say, here's some immediate solutions you can take back. Treating people fairly is something you can do today. Uh, looking at your hiring, looking at the character of the people that you're hiring is something you can do today. Treating people with respect is something you can do today. How do you, how do you respond to officers that say, first and foremost, we need to, we need to treat people better before we get to um, these bigger issues, before we get to structural, structural changes? How, how, do you, how do you gauge that? Well, I think the structural changes are what are going to ensure that officers are consistently treating people better, right? So it's nice, like, I think that's the outcome of better community control of police departments. And there are a lot of things that you can do. We, we have resolutions about training, about hiring, about retention policies and all that. But the fundamentals are really that the community has to have a voice at the table and not just in community forums, not just to get as an advisor piece, but actual true power over how their communities are policed. The demand of community control of police was also echoed by some officers and community leaders who attended. Serving as a police officer, and particularly at the state level, and also having the opportunity to serve uh, on, the, on, the, on a city and metropolitan area uh, level, and seeing all of these different issues that are popping up, I believe that. I believe that, uh, that you have to have the community involved. In other words, the police are actually serving the citizens. And if I serve the citizens, then I should have some say-so as to who is actually serving the community. The biggest obstacle to what you're seeing, to what you're saying, are police unions, the FOP and other unions. How do you respond? And, and their argument is that you don't know how to, what it's like to be an officer. You shouldn't have a say, you know, you, don't have, you shouldn't have a say in how and how the police are run. They, that's what they say to... And I understand that, and, and I understand some of those political powers and also the contracts that they, that they, uh, they come up with. But I think, I think they're being very naive to begin to believe that just because I'm not a police officer, I live in this community, I know how I want to be treated, and you want to de there, there's a tendency to devalue me as a citizen, you know, based on the fact that I'm not a police officer. It's just a matter of true community oversight, commu true community leadership, where we have kind of spoke on these 
unconstitutional or oppressive practices in our police departments for decades. And it is time for a collaborative of black law enforcement to kind of step up and not conform to the establishment. We also asked participants if from their perspective, underlying issues like unemployment, mass incarceration and homelessness must also be addressed. You know, if you're serving your community in a holistic manner, I'm talking about public safety from a public safety standpoint. So as a police officer, if I'm serving them holistically, right? So I'm looking beyond, what, why do you keep breaking into these cars, mm -hmm. right? Is there a drug habit? Because you don't have a job, whatever it is. And I begin to maybe bring resources to you mm -hmm. so you can then take that off the table, then yes. So number one, what you're doing is you're giving your, you're giving your community increased stability. Um, you're moving the criminal element from the community. Um, you're doing a lot of things rather than just putting handcuffs on somebody. And so what can be done um, on a political level, let's just say in Baltimore, to make that happen, to, to get those resources to the East and West Baltimore Listen, community? Pol political level, that's beyond my pay grade, so I won't talk about political level. All I, I'll, I'll stay in my swim lane. I think it's really important for the police to recognize that, and I think that they can be allies in the fights that we need to fight to make sure that things um, actually change. For example, there's a lot of people who talk about police acting like social workers because there are other services that people aren't able to access, like mental health services, drug treatment. Well, then we need to actually be working with police as allies to say, okay, if you can't change this as police chief, then work with us as we're advocating to the people that can change this, right? We have to first acknowledge the history of policing and not only Baltimore City, but our country. And there, there are multiple root issues caused by this history of oppression and slavery and all of those aspects that cause a certain dynamic. In the years, policing has kind of evolved into what we see today, and that comes from the need to kind of control a population. And you also were one of the lone voices raising the issue of the drug war, kind of the elephant in the room uh, here. Um, talk a little bit about why you think that's so fundamental in, in having community control and improving, again, improving that relationship between community and police. Yeah, well, I think most people know that the, the, the drug war is, never could be won. Um, if you really want to reduce crime, disease, death, and addiction, it's not through our criminal justice system. It has to be a health-centered program. For much more on this topic, including a recent episode of The Real Baltimore that discusses why many are saying only empowered communities can address violence, go to thereallnews.com. With Cameron Granadino, this is Jessel Knorr.